how much has the changes we've seen, the concerns about Russia, the concerns about war in Europe, the concerns about supply chain, changed the recovery plan and the transition plan of Italy? Good morning, sir. Good morning. Well, first of all, uh, I mean, clearly the consensus for Russia went down to zero. It is unacceptable what we're seeing in what is happening in, in Ukraine. And having said this, uh, of course, now we have uh, a problem. We have to accelerate as much as possible the diversification of the gas sources. I mean, Italy at the moment has a rather favorable uh, position because we are connected by five different uh, pipelines. So we can differentiate rather, e rather easily uh, with other exporting countries. So our plan is about uh, is that about two thirds of the gas import from Russia will be replaced by other um, importing countries through our pipelines, and approximately one third will be replaced by new uh, regasificators using liquid uh, natural gas. I mean, just to remind to to your audience, we approximately we import 29 billion cubic meter every year, so approximately 20 will be replaced by other gas uh, sources and approximately 10 will be replaced by two new regasificators. Mr. Ciglani, um, Dr. Sultan Al Jaba of Adnoc just says that in the last few moments there's been an unrealistic approach to the energy transition that has ignored basic economics. Would you like to comment on that? Because there's been a feeling amongst a lot of people in the energy industry that that is exactly the case and that the hopes and aspirations of the European politicians especially have ignored those basic economics. It depends pretty much on the starting situation, the starting conditions of different countries. Um, I mean, clearly, uh, there is a lot of ideology when people say that we can replace uh, all conventional energy sources by using renewable in a few years. This is This is... Not true, primarily because those are non-programmable sources and we still miss good uh, accumulation technology. So there are many reasons. However, clearly we can accelerate the path towards decarbonization by installing um, much more renewable power than in, in the last 10 years. I mean, Italy has a plan for installing approximately 70 gigawatt of new renewable electricity sources in the next nine years. Um, that is a substantial increase. Of course, this has to be accompanied by uh, the face out of a coal, which is happening in Italy quite well. And of course, there will be a, a face out of the gas on a much longer time scale. I mean, clearly, this depends on where you start from. And I, I'm, I'm quite confident that uh, we can keep our decarbonization pathway to minus 55% by 2030. Uh, if the situation will not get worse, of course, with, with the war in Ukraine, we can, we can keep our commitment. Um, I mean, of course, there are countries in which this is more difficult. Uh, Italy started with with, um, with a, a considerable amount of uh, uh, renewable electricity already in place. Uh, I think we made a mistake in over the last 20 years, uh, maybe focusing too much on uh, import of gas. Uh, we should have produced more gas from our sources, but this is something we can fix over the next few years. Uh, can I just jump in and ask you about the pressure on consumers because uh, Italy is using this measure now, uh, a windfall tax, so, so uh, tax on the profits of some of these energy companies to try and to take pressure off consumers. But as we continue to go through this process around energy transition, it feels as though the consumer may still feel pressure over many months to come. Do we look at this tax, therefore, as a short-term tax or something that might be there for a lot longer than we anticipate? Actually, uh, I think the worst thing that happened over the last few months was that there was an, uh, an unjustifiable uh, increase in the price of gas. I mean, I've been watching the situation for <coughs> um, pardon, for uh, the last 12 months, and you should have seen one year ago, uh, we had exactly the same amount of gas flowing in the pipelines everywhere in Europe, and the cost was approximately 20 cents of euro per cubic meter. And now all of a sudden, this went up to one, more than one euro. And so you understand that if you want to make your storage, uh, you need uh, five, six times as much money compared to last year. This is a nonsense. And there is no a priori reason for that. This is just a combination of uh, um, market uh, dynamics, uh, some speculation. I mean, of course, citizens and companies cannot afford for that. The pressure comes more from the, uh, the so-called free market, which is, which is not so advantageous for citizens and companies rather than from taxes. 
Uh, I mean, of course, uh, citizens are available um, to make some effort, to make some sacrifice, to improve the, the quality of the environment, but we cannot ask them to, to spend all their money for, 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 the, for the energy. And, and this is something that should be fixed at European level. So the, there is, the, the price of gas is a nonsense at the moment. And this, in turn, influences the price of electricity. And when, when you have um, heating, uh, thermal electricity, uh, so expensive, uh, you reduce competitiveness in the, com in, in, in the companies, in the industrial sector. So this is really unacceptable at the moment. I think we should, we should really slow down a little bit and, and redesign the, the market of energy. Minister, we have heard many comments out from uh, the French President Emmanuel Macron, who's in campaign at the, this stage, and he has been calling for European champions and a European-wide strategy when it comes to industry policy. When it comes to purchasing gas uh, as a, a block, does that make sense? Because it, it sort of stops the European nations pitting each other against each other in, in competition for supply at this stage. Just walk us through the practicalities of, of European-wide purchases. Yeah, I get the point. I mean, obviously, um, joint procurement and common storage could be a solution in that Europe is the largest customer in the world for gas. I think we purchase every year 400 uh, billion cubic meter of gas plus the um, LNG. So uh, clearly, we, we could set the market. However, um, each country in Europe has a different, um, a different energy mix. And of course, the, the local circumstances are very different. So the point is that the Commission now has to find a sort of a, a compromise, a sort of synthesis of the different needs. Uh, this is not easy, but I think uh, it would be anyway convenient that Europe adopts a common strategy. Maybe the strategy is not unified, just not a single strategy, a sort of multi-purpose strategy. But we should agree, of course, um, a global uh, European position. I'm not saying this is easy. It will take time, but I think the progress of the recent um, um, uh, of the recent meetings of the commissions were uh, are promising. Uh, I mean, I believe that uh, uh, a common European price for gas, for instance, will be uh, a good solution. A price that should be uh, high enough for investors and producers uh, to be happy, but also low enough for uh, companies and citizens to to afford for the 